Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're headed out to my storage, trying to clean out some uh, old projects. And here is a 1963 uh, Montgomery Ward's Imperial, not to be confused with the Magnavox Imperial. This is a model WG-5974A. Uh, this has been sitting here. I uncovered it today. I'm trying to get rid of lots of projects. And you can see here that I stopped at the television portion. There's the record changer. The Mar Quad, which was originally a swinging pendulum style cartridge. It's been replaced previously. It says the Imperial on it. Likewise, when we go to the cover here, it says Imperial. And down here we've got Airline Stereo High Fidelity. So, uh, I had forgotten why I mothballed this thing. I think I got frustrated with it when after, uh, I did the work on the radio and the turntable portion, and then the television wouldn't work. So let me plug it in real quick, and I'll show you what it does. More or less, the oscillator doesn't come up to speed, and the horizontal output is probably red plating. Yep, there it is. Squealy, squealy. And if we adjust the horizontal hold, frequency varies, but not enough. So, I'm not going to run it like that for long just because, well, it'll hurt the horizontal output too. But, but uh, anyway, you can see that I was frustrated with it. That's just glued onto the wood, by the way, so there's nothing, no fasteners there. So we need to get this thing apart and get the chassis out so that we can uh, figure out what's going on with it. Based on the fact that I still have oscillator control but no, uh, no drive, I'm going to guess the horizontal AFC diode's probably got an open side or a shorted side, which would throw off the... DC bias to the oscillator circuit and screw with things, but we'll find out. So let me get the back off. There's just two screws holding it on. All right, here it is with the back off. You can see it's a Wells Gardner based set here. Series string, nothing fancy. According to some notes I have, uh, the tubes were all checked previously. So there's a fair chance that they're fine. It's just something else. You can see down in there, the little square gizmodroid, the orange thing. That's your AFC diode right there. Sorry if I'm going to make everyone motion sick. Obviously, there's not enough room for a, a tripod. It's got the crumbling yoke disease, but thankfully, I believe everything in this just unplugs. So, it's just a matter of unplugging the CRT. I think the only reason why I went after this originally was because the CRT was in such good shape. And then, down in here... The yoke unplugs right there. It's just a eight pin jobber. And then I'm just gonna unclip the high voltage. I'm not worried about it since it's not generating anything. CRT ground. Antenna leads back here.
something else up here. Yep. Ground to the bezel. <clears throat> Let's see, that looks like our audio. That just unplugs there. And there's a power thing. There, that's probably going to need two hands. Let me put the camera down for a second. Then there's this thing, which is a one of those photo cells that's supposed to adjust the brightness automatically. So we'll need a little quarter inch nut there to get that out. And then these come out pretty easy. There's uh, two 5 16 bolts at the bottom and three at the top here. So that's, I'll just undo those and then uh, we'll get this thing out of here. All right, I have no idea how this is going to look on camera because it's just kind of propped up. Let me get a feel underneath here of where this is. Fat hands in here is another thing. I didn't put these back in very tight, so apparently I identified something early and said screw it. I haven't touched this thing since, gosh, probably a good four or five years. And then let's see here. You can see the top side. I don't think you can. Let's just grab this. And there's just the three up here. Obviously, I'm being very careful because the bell of the CRT is right next to me, and I don't want to smack that. This is one of those CRTs that has no rim band or anything, just a piece of safety glass in the front. So if you strike the bell and it goes off, you're just getting hit in the face with a bunch of shrapnel. I'm probably going to end up taking the yoke off this CRT too because I don't really have a full jig for this and obviously trying to troubleshoot and test it while it's installed in here is not really possible but I can still read the horizontal frequency and make sure it's generating high voltage all right so then we got to take that guy loose Where did I put my, there's the 516, so where did I put the quarter inch? All right, hold on. Okay, let's get this out of here. I never even fully seated this one. All right, so that comes out, and then there's your little photo cell there, fancy schmancy. Okay, so now we gotta wrestle with getting this out. Okay. cage pop loose all right let's get this on a surface I can take a look at it 
Okay, so here it is. Nice and out. So I'll probably be looking at this guy Somebody's replaced those. As far as I remember, this is the sink section. And this is the oscillator, horizontal oscillator. Let's just flip it over real quick. The two caps were replaced here. These are just hooked in. Another one over here. This is for this is the sound output, I think. We're soldering on the tube sockets. Let's make sure there's no shorts or bridges or anything like that. Okay. I mean, nominally, it looks all right. So let me get the yoke off the tube, and then we'll get this thing into the uh, workshop and see what's going on with it, why it's squealing. All right, so here we are. Everything's kind of a mess right now. In fact, let me go take that paperwork out from under the yoke so that I don't expose anybody's information. Everything's just been kind of a mess right now because of way too much work. Uh, haven't been on YouTube much just because haven't had the time so anyway back to this um, we're going to yank out the AFC diode right here test it uh, even if it does test okay I think I'm just going to replace it just because they get leaky they fail they all sorts of stuff that will interrupt the horizontal oscillator now this repair is somewhat challenging because I don't have the load of a CRT uh, Cables really aren't long enough on this to run it outside of the console, just kind of propped up. I don't really have the facilities to do that in the storage area, and I don't have a jig for black and white stuff. I have a color jig, but not a black and white jig. And propped up in its cabinet, this really isn't easy to troubleshoot. So, basically, we're just going to go over the circuit, and we're going to make sure that all the components are happy, all the resistors and the multivibrator are happy. Uh, before I left the house, I swapped the tubes since they're the same. This is the sink and this is the horizontal output. I rolled them. No difference, so it's definitely not the tube. Uh, that's your vertical output, so that's not even in the equation here. I could test the dampener, although I don't see how the dampener would affect the horizontal oscillator, considering I can still adjust it. All these things are going through my head right now. So anyways... Let's focus on getting this little guy out, and then we'll test it and see what what we're actually looking at here. Okay, I know the lighting sucks. It's not great, but that's what I got. I think that's the uh, guy right there. I think that's it right there. So that's our AFC diode. Let's go ahead and yank this out. Move it to a location you can see it a little better. I've never liked Wells Gardner sets because the wiring is so messy. I could probably clean this up, but knowing my luck, I'd introduce some sort of interference into the screen because, you know, chaotic wiring is somehow better in this scenario. It's just Yankee Yankee. Okay, let's see how well this is gonna work. We'll just pull this out. Set this aside momentarily. Yeah, let's go get a uh, tester component identifier to see what it's doing. So here's my Ghetto Fabulous transistor tester. The little plug-in thing died after only about a year of using it, so 
I've made this fantastic contraption with clip leads and little studs on the top. I could have just bought another one for like 30 bucks, but I figured, eh, whatever. Fix what you got. So let's see what the tester says about this. He'll probably say it's fine, but it's likely not. Yep, gone. This little sucker is gone. It says it's a capacitor. Cool. All right. So let's see what I've got floating around here that I can use to replace it. Oh, yeah, pay no mind to this. TIP48. It'll focus. Stop looking back there and look at what's in front of you, stupid camera. There we go. TIP48 was uh, out of an Akai reel-to-reel -reel I was working on yesterday. The betas go way down on them, which kills the direct drive motor voltage and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I've replaced that. Anyways, on to bigger and better. Well, anyway, uh, I can't find any of my shot key diodes, and I've already robbed the ones that I have off all of my old switching power supply boards. So, more or less, what we're going to have to do is... For now, just uh, take some 1N4007s and make them up to work in this uh, circuit. It's not really ideal, but it will probably function for my needs. And let me just make that up here. So I'm just taking these. We just need a 3-lead device with the cathode in the center. Nothing fancy. And let me trim this. And then make a little hook. Solder it all together. It's about an hour and a half before we open, so I'm just going to assume that the phone calls are going to start pouring in here really soon. Everyone loves to call, like, way before we're open. Alright, so let me get a roll of solder set up here. And then I'm going to solder these two points together. My hands will decide to cooperate today. That would be great. All right, let's solder this guy in. And yes, if you're wondering, that part I am holding does get pretty toasty, which is why you have a really hot iron and you do it really fast. So there we go. There's our common, our uh, common uh, cathode. Stop looking at it. There we go. Common cathode, uh, pathetic AFC diode thing. So let's solder that bad boy in. I'm just going to insert it down in here first. Just let it stick up. Probably should be using fast recovery diodes, but this circuit may be primitive enough that it doesn't care. We'll find out, and if we have to get it, we have to get it. Okay, so it's installed. Now we'll have a little bit of a challenge as far as testing it. 
because obviously it's not with the rest of the console and it's not with the CRT. get this in a better position here, get all these testing wires out of the way. All right. Okay, so obviously we have a couple challenges. We have to apply power. Now this chassis originally got its power from the radio console, so we'll have to jump her two pins there to make that work. And we're going to hook the yoke up. Just as a load for the flyback. Let's see if I can get this tube right. Guess that'll do for now. So this is really just going to be a dummy load. We don't have a CRT hooked up. Uh, because also this is a series string, we need to jumper uh, the pins on the CRT here. Now, what that means realistically is there's going to be more energy on the rest of the tubes, which means that I have to overall reduce the voltage reduce the voltage to the uh, chassis overall. So instead of running it at a 115 volts, maybe 105 or close to 100, we'll see. It may not oscillate at that low a voltage, but we'll find out. So I'm locating the, the two heater leads, which are black and brown that come through the hole here. And so I need to uh, produce a jumper between those two spots. So that it will bypass the CRT filament since it needs to be in circuit. Okay. And the other thing I need to do is create a jumper for the power here. And let me see if I have a, a mated cord. I don't think I do. Well, what you can nominally do with these is connect the two ends together like this. This is essentially mimicking your on and off switch because the AC nominally comes in on the red and gray, and the red and the black are unified. At least usually that's how it goes. We'll put the dim bulb tester in series with it just to be sure. So let me go grab that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, is flip the switch on my isolation transformer. And, um, we're going to see what our current draw is, and we're going to see if I can get any semblance of uh, life out of this. Now, our AFC diode was obviously bad, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be the cure-all fix. There could be other stuff wrong we're just not aware of yet. So, anyways, let's fire it up, and uh, let's see what, what, what happens. So, that's acting like a dead short. So let's see if they got the two middle ones as the switch. There we go. As the filament's all stabilized, that should get dimmer. So far, so good. But this may not be enough oomph to get it to oscillate.
yeah, I don't think it's enough voltage to start. The bulb's getting brighter, but probably not enough voltage there. Yeah, the way you can tell if the vertical's running or not is hold a metallic tool near the coils and see if you feel any 60 or 50 cycle vibration or whatever the oscillator is running at. And in that case, it's nothing. But the bulb's not super bright, so let's take it off the dim bulb tester and just see if we can blow it up or not. Fascinating stuff. Still squealing. No high voltage. Something still ain't right. trying to but it ain't working all right so we're still at that same point it is more variable but still ain't working right so now we need to take a closer look at the horizontal oscillator circuit but before we do that out of curiosity it's just one of those I hope the flyback isn't bad scenarios because that would suck um, let's see now. We can take the top cap off of the rectifier and see. Let's get the cage out of here. Get a little trouble. There's our donut. see if disconnecting the top plate affects that we may have a bad rectifier who knows let's see if it squeals without the rectifier attached yep still does No bueno. All right, so we know it's not a shorted rectifier. That's an issue. So I guess now, just for grins and giggles, we'll test these two 6FQ7s. And we'll test the uh, dampener and the horizontal output and see what we get there. Let's just give a quick look and see going on with the tubes given the freak failure that this is I doubt that it's going to be a tube. it's probably going to be something else so let's see here 6FQ7 I believe on a 747 it's a socket 7 yep. I think got it listed there Phone's blowing up today. And that's 74 and 74. Let's pop this out of the holder so we can see what we're doing here. No shorts. Good emission. And like I said, when I swapped the tubes around, there was no change. So. You're probably fine. Let's get the other 6FQ7 in here. Again, still acceptable. All right. So let's look at our damper. 12 AY3, it's a weird number. 
socket 20, 12, and 14. Let's see how our dampener tube does. That's pretty good, doesn't it? All right. And let's see how our horizontal output does, which is a 12 GT5. Now this one's got all sorts of tricks to it, huh? C-A-V, space, space, C-F, D-E and 1, and let's see, GG5 socket 25, I knew the phone calls were coming in real soon, let me just get rid of this and then we'll get back to this. It's on a lot, puts a little tired. Make sure I got the right, uh, nope, I don't have the right thing. Let's see, once uh, 63 on the plate. Okay, that's fine. I figured it wasn't a tube issue, it's a circuit issue. So, now we got to figure out what's going on with the oscillator circuit. Or, there could be a bad flyback which would suck. I do have a spare and another chassis, but, uh, God, I hope it's not that. Then I'm going to have to swap that, too. Yeah, crap. So we're going to do some basic checks and just see if there are any obvious components that have gone by the wayside, open resistor, shorted cap, anything like that. I find it weird that it just all of a sudden fails. Yeah, 820K, it's at 870. It's not bad enough to mean anything. 1.5 meg, it's 1 meg. There's another 1 meg. 22 meg. Thinking that's going to be 22 meg. Should be a 680k, 780. These are all a little off, but it's not enough that it would kill everything. 5.6 reads 5.7. What do you do? And let's see here. Yep, 12k still. Should be another 1 meg. And then we've got this 390k. That's still good enough. Again, another 390k. Okay. And then you've got these supply voltage resistors here. That should be a 12. Yeah, 12k. Reading 6. 18K is slowly going upwards to it. That should be a 68K. 70. Yeah, let's make sure these diodes aren't shorted. That still reads all right. Mm-hmm. I think those read your sync pulses. It would have something to do with the sync pulses. 
15k read 16 here's 100k that's happy so well, that's interesting let's try that again shunting that all right so and then I'm pretty sure I put this in all right mm-hmm nothing obvious here Okay, well, there's nothing standing out. Next thing I'm kind of looking at is this uh, oscillator coil. Let's see if the oscillator coil is still alive. I would assume it is since we have some modicum of control of it. Yeah, we still read there. So coil's not open. No shorts there. See if everybody can see that okay. Yeah, da, 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 da. You have a primary on the uh, flyback. Although without a ringer, I'm not going to be able to check much. So again, nothing obvious. I'm sure everyone's getting bored of this by now. Let's see here. What's this? The wire's dressed okay. There's some sort of nasty hack going on over here with this wire poking through the board. But that's probably not it either. Let's just get this out of the way so I can see. Yeah, the fact that there was a lot of uh, resoldering going on here. Make sure nothing happened, like I bridged a connection or something I wasn't supposed to. Scrapey, scrapey. Never know when there's a little flake of flux, flux and solder that gets stuck in here. I did resolder a lot of connections. But nothing obvious, you know. All right, well, one more shot before we uh, go to other troubleshooting methods. Everything's lighting.
I can hear the vertical running. Let's see. Got a little tweaker tool here. I'll adjust the oscillator coil. Here's our high voltage. Why is it so loud? It should be faster than that. Hissy hissy. Yeah, so we'll have to double check the frequency. We'll uh, save that for next time. I'm going to put this aside for now and come back to it a little bit later. But it's not red plating anymore, so that's good. Just got to find out what's wrong. So uh, thanks for watching this part. More stuff to come.